Hello, geometry, welcome. So kind of the plan, we've been working on our 3D shapes. What we are going to do is look at some actual applications of those, do a little practice, and you are gonna have a quiz on this, last quiz of the year, next class. So let's just hop right into it and see what we have. Okay, so first up, let's talk about space. Space is always kind of cool. So here is the Earth. One thing that's a little bit weird is that Huh. For a lot of my calculations, I need the radius. I need the radius of a sphere. Well, I can't really just measure the radius of a sphere directly like Earth because I can't drill a tape measure right into the center. It would melt. It would be way too long. Impossible. So what I can do is thankfully somehow use the circumference and work backwards to try and figure it out out. Okay, so what I have is that, hmm, the circumference of the Earth is 25,000 miles. I know the equation circumference equals 2 pi r. So I'm just going to work backwards to find the radius. Well, let's see, how do I undo a times 2 here? I'm just going to divide everything by 2. So that'll be 12,500 is pi times r. Now to solve for r, to get that by itself, I need to undo a times pi, and I can do that by dividing by pi. Which I get the radius is 3,978.9 miles. So this is a pretty common approach, especially in astronomy, because you can't directly measure the radius of a planet or a star, but you can find the circumference and then just calculate the radius from there. So now let's use the radius to find the surface area. So that's just the outside of our planet. So that's finding the area of all the oceans and land all added together. Well, thankfully for a sphere, we have a nice surface area equation, and we just figured out that our radius is 3978.9. So for surface area, I'll just plug in radius 3978.9 and go 4 times pi times 3978.9 squared and the surface area of our planet is 198,946,321.1 square miles. So is that a lot? Yes. But is Earth large? Yes. Also very large. Okay, now let's try and find the volume. The globe is a sphere, so volume is 4 thirds pi radius cubed. Well, and we have the radius. So I'll just plug in my radius, 3978.9. Cube that, so I'll go 4 divided by 3, times pi, times 3978.9 to the third, and I get 2, 6, 3, 8, Six two five zero five seven three three. So that is two hundred and sixty three billion eight hundred sixty two million five hundred five thousand seven hundred thirty three miles cubed. Big number. And we talked about this in one of my classes. Compared to other things, this is not even that big. Like the sun, its volume is one point three million times the volume of Earth. So if you want the volume of our sun, it's 1.3 million times that. And there's other stars that are even bigger than our sun. Our sun is not big by any means. Cool, it's kind of nice to see that in space. Let's talk about farming. Okay, we've got a grain silo. And, ooh, probably most of us have seen this. So here's a grain silo. And we're trying to find the total volume inside. So how much can be stored inside of it, right? So grain silos are good for like wheats and barleys and corns and soybeans, things like that. You can store a while and then sell when the market is better. Okay, so let us see what we have. So I had some dimensions on that last page. The radius here is seven feet. The height is 45 feet. And the thing on the top is just half of a sphere. 
should call a hemisphere. So if I want the total volume, I just want to think of a couple pieces here. This main kind of column, the main sort of shaft of the silo, looks to be a cylinder. And then the top is a hemisphere, half of a sphere. So let's just find the volume of each separately. At the end, we can add them together. That should be the total. So for a cylinder, volume is pi r squared height. So we'll plug in my radius of 7. My height is 45. And I get the volume of just the cylinder part is 6927.2. Now for the hemisphere, while well an entire sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, a hemisphere is just half of that because it's half a sphere. So let's divide it by 2 at the end. So I'll go 4 divided by 3 times pi times 7 to the third divided by 2. And that should be my hemisphere. And I did it wrong. Which for just the hemisphere I get 718.38. So the total volume, if I just add those together, should be... 7,645.58 cubic feet. So that's how much can actually be stored in the grain silo. So definitely tougher, but kind of nice to see these things in action. All right, next up we have a shipping container, which what shape does it look like? It looks like a prism. And for a nice prism, especially a rectangular prism, the volume is just length times width times height. So the volume of this thing will be 40 times 8 times 9.5, which is 3,040 cubic feet. Nothing too shabby about that. Why is that important? Well, that's how much stuff you can fit into this shipping container. The other thing we may want to know is, ooh, the surface area. So surface area is just the outside. That's going to be all the outside edges. That's just how much steel, how much metal it takes to make one of these things. So for an actual manufacturer, that's going to help determine their cost, how much material it takes to make them. Well, for a prism, how do you find surface area? You just find all these surfaces, all these different rectangles and squares on the outsides, and you add them up. So for this first one, I'm going to call it the end. It's just a rectangle. It's 8 feet by 9.5 feet, which is 76 square feet. And there are two of those, one on the front, kind of one on the back. Okay, then next up, how about I check out, oh, let's say the top. So maybe I think of the top of this shipping container. It's 40 feet long and 8 feet wide. So that's 320 square feet. Once again, there's two of these. Then I also need to look at, hmm, my last one will be kind of the front. So I guess I'll call that front, sort of. So it's 40 feet long, 9.5 feet tall, so that's 380 square feet. And there's two of those because there's one in the front and then right across from it the same sort of a thing. So now my total surface area is just add them all up. So there's 76 and 76, kind of the two ends. There's 320 and 320, that's the top and the bottom. And then 380 and 380, those are the two sides. And if you add those up, that should be 1,500 and... 52, I think. I should probably double check and not just do mental math. 1552. Cool, so that was our goal for today. Is it tougher? Yes, but it's nice to see these things actually in real application. So we'll stop there. We are going to have a quiz next time, so happy mathing, and shoot me an email if you need some help. Thank you.